Hey everyone, this is Miniature Mike. Today I'm going to go over all the tools that I have acquired to build book nooks and other miniatures. Let's start with glue. Uh, the first set I ever got came with glue like this, but forget that glue. You're going to either want to get this glue here or something similar. My favorite thing about this glue is it says, this was a great adhesive. You can get this kind of glue. I got this one for fabric specifically because in my last miniature, I had to make mini pillows, a couch, and I wanted fabric glue. And this is also one of my favorites, actually my new favorite that I kind of like over this. Now, these are larger sizes. What I've realized is that <clears throat> this can be too big for some of the miniatures. So I would recommend going with this, this one broke, going with the smaller versions. So when this glue runs out, I'll be switching back to the smaller versions. And then a glue stick, which was a recommendation from a Facebook group uh, to help me when I make little mini books to get the book cover on the piece of wood. All right, next, uh, tape. So most book nook sets and miniature sets come with these little tape strips. They're fine. However, I just use this clear scotch tape. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about dealing with these and I can make it any length I want. Also, I use masking tape sometimes depending on what I'm doing. In my last miniature, I used some masking tape where you can't see it. Obviously, you're not taping where you can see it, but I found the masking tape a little easier to use. Now, very importantly, you have to have a good set of tweezers to handle all the different miniatures. These are my three main ones. There's this one, this long, skinny one, and then this shorter, fatter one, which actually is probably my favorite, though I do tend to use this one a lot. Some sets come with them, some sets don't. This came with a set, I don't remember which one, this one came with a set, uh, but I decided these are much nicer, heavier, they're metal. I bought these to round out the set. You'll need some scissors. Obviously, these are uh, <laughs> way more expensive than I thought they were. Probably should have checked the price, but these are like fabric scissors. Again, I bought these specifically to build the pillows and the couches, and these are just regular paper scissors because you're going to get book covers you know, these are our, our book covers, then you got to cut them out. But my lines weren't great, so I bought this thing. This cuts paper. It's a game changer. It lines it up perfectly. So when I want to cut the books perfectly, I can using this. This is fantastic. Got it at Hobby Lobby. Some miniatures come with a music box or some kind of swinging door to get to the uh, battery pack. They will provide you with little screwdrivers. These both came from kits, but obviously if you have screwdrivers, you have screwdrivers and you could just use those. But if, if you need to, like this miniature, the last one that I did has a music box that I had to screw into a piece of wood. It came with a little screwdriver. So this came from a, a book nook and I didn't really use it, but it was like, you know, put this piece one and one and a half centimeters here and five centimeters there. I used it a little bit. I kind of winged it. It depends on how accurate you want to be and, and what the what it actually is that you're doing. But some kits will come with a ruler and have you actually place things based on centimeter measurements. You need a razor blade. This one, this one was actually in a book nook kit. So I don't have an example, but you have the piece of wood, right? And then you have the little punch out. Let me see. If this has it you see that edge there I don't know if you can see it but there was a point where this little piece of wood here was connected to the wooden frame and what you do is you just take the knife and you break that connection this is especially important with super small pieces I have broken many many pieces because I didn't take the time to take the, the razor blade that they gave me and just break that connection wherever it is so it falls out nicely uh, so these are, were actually part of a kit. These are designed to help you punch things out. Uh, you'll find them sometimes among all the pieces, and you just use these little wood pieces 
to help punch pieces out. But these come with with the uh, kit. So after you break the connections with the razor, you can easily just poke it out. I also use these to poke out pieces too. But be careful. Uh, this one's actually pretty sharp. I use it often to uh, punch out pieces, but you don't want to break the, uh, the pieces. I have a pencil, just like when I was cutting out the, the fabric. Uh, you know, not I'm trying to think with the book, no, because I don't think I ever used a pencil, but depending on what you're doing, I like having one around in case I have to, you know, do something, measure something, you know, uh, cut out a, a fabric pattern or something. Sandpaper, I've mentioned in my rules for making book nooks and, and miniatures, especially book nooks, if things aren't going in properly, they provide you with these little emery boards, shave the wood down so it fits better. You don't want to force it. You don't want to break it. So utilize what they give you. All three of these, actually all of these, all the sandpaper and emery boards, they all came with kits. So they're there for a reason. They're not arbitrary. This is something that I didn't know that I was going to use. Sharpies. And these are our um, touch-up markers for furniture. So in my last miniature, I had to make a little um, typewriter. And it gave me this gold pen to like dot the keys. This was useless. Just get rid of that. What I did is I got a gold Sharpie. Made it much easier Anytime I have something dark, I touch it up with the black. Sometimes to get, oh, when you do use the sandpaper, you actually will sometimes, you know, brush away some of the paint, some of the, of the picture on the piece of wood. So I keep a brown and a black and now these wood tones to touch things up to make them look better if I had to sand them, you know, beyond what I really wanted to. I also have these work mats. I just like working on them directly instead of this uh, fold-up table. That way, when I'm using the razor blade, I'm not cutting into the table. And uh, they, I, I just like having a nice work surface. Um, clamps. So, my first book nook ever. I could not get the thing to stay together. So I looked up woodworking, and I bought these woodworking clamps. And so I just put, imagine here, you also need paper towels. If that's the book nook... Just there, clamp it, let the glue dry, bam, it's all good. I have long ones, and I have shorter ones. So I have a whole bunch over here, a whole bunch of wood clamps to help me build my book nooks. Paper towels, things get sticky and gluey. I have these clamps too, little, little clamps to clamp smaller things, especially when I was making books, I would put it on clamp the book, let let it dry. That way I'm not sitting here like this for an hour. It doesn't take an hour, but I'm exaggerating. But I got the little clamps too. Okay, so the tools. The tools will get gooey and gummy. So you want to get some super glue remover. Now, this stuff is no joke. It is very flammable. It is very strong. I was just going to leave these in a... What I was going to do basically, kind of like, like a painter, leave the brush in the water... I was going to put some in the bottom of a plastic cup and just let the tool sit in there. It dissolved the plastic cup. And, the, and this went everywhere. Uh, so what I do is I take a paper towel, I squirt some of the glue, a remover, I wear gloves, and I just clean off the tools that way. You can I don't know if you can see it, but you can see they get a little gummy. Just because you're, you're manipulating glued items, right? Um, I also have some goo gone, but this is... Weak. This is nothing compared compared to this is... Now, I don't use this on the book nooks. I don't use this to take pieces apart. I only use it to clean my, my tools. I would not recommend using it on the actual products. You know, the actual book nooks. And guys... Oh, and my, and my magnifying glass and my uh, light here. This is was, was my mainstay when I was making books. You know, bring it down like this. Makes it nice and big, easier to um, uh, manipulate. And I use it whenever I need to. Whenever I have something super small that I need to see better, this. Perfect. So uh, besides what comes in the kit, like all the different wood pieces and stuff, you know, um, sometimes you'll have to make a mirror. But if it's part of the book nook, they're going to provide it. But these are the tools that I have. Um that along the way after building several now that I've acquired and have really helped me 
be successful and help, you know, build them quickly. And, you know, you have to have the right tools um, to do the job. If not, it's not going to be um, enjoyable. So again, I'm Miniature Mike. If you have any questions or want to know, well, guys, I got all this off of Amazon, except for the stuff from Hobby Lobby. I got a few things from Hobby Lobby, uh, like, like this glue, this workstation or, you know, work pad, this, uh, these fancy scissors, which I got a protection plan on. Because I didn't know they were over $30. I should probably look at price tags. But they're awesome. This did not cut the fabric very well. This, perfect. So get the right tools for the job. And guys, happy miniature making. I'm Miniature Mike. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.